Hello and welcome to uh, Das Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly and today we're going to do something different. Um, I am uh, going to play through this uh, Russian Space Quest ripoff. Um, uh, yes, uh, I'm going to uh, cut down a few parts, especially when I'm trying to look for solutions. And this uh, horrendous intro, well, um, you see the amazing quality of animation here. And here is actually like the only joke that I find kind of funny in the game. Um, it's sort of the blend of uh, even in the future nothing works from space balls and uh, this is how we fix things on Russian space station. Uh, so Armageddon, obviously. Uh, and uh, here's the actual in introduction sequence uh, with credits. So the game is called uh, Ivan Loshkin Tsuna Svoboda. Um, or um, Ivan Lashkin and the price of freedom. Um, the song it's playing here is a 1980 hit by the band called Zimnani. Um, yeah, the title of the game is uh, kind of a pun in a way. Uh, the last names of the characters, uh, Roger Wilco in, 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 in Russian. Um, the word uh, Wilco sounds kind of like the word Vilka, which is the word for fork. And uh, uh, the main protagonist's uh, last name here, Lashkin, is uh, kind of a last name that would originate from the word spoon. Uh, just weird. All right, here we go. So uh, yeah, as you can tell, it's uh, pretty Space Quest ripoffy. Um, the interface is slightly different, but not uh, too much, and uh, the art style is uh, very similar. And the car, you know, and the crash, the pod crash. Uh, so here we go, uh, and uh, yep, here's the first death. Um, I got eaten. The death screens don't have uh, clever, you know, end screens or animations, so it's just uh, restore, restart, and quit. Uh, yeah, very. I mean, this game is not very good. <laughs> it's you know the only point of interest it is it's being uh, a space quest ripoff. A uh, couple of, a couple actually, a whole bunch of really, really bad design decisions made here. Like one of them is right here. Like you can climb the tree only in a specific U spot. Uh, uh, I'm gonna break off this piece over here. And uh, here's one interesting part coming up. If you fall, you actually fall, and this kind of thing would totally kill Roger Wilco or, or anybody in a Sierra Adventure game. But uh, surprisingly, there's a few non-lethal. Uh, things in this game like you kind of expect to be dead but no oh yeah we're just gonna smack the monster over here and uh, beam ourselves into the uh, ship I'm actually not going to translate uh, any of the dialogue or I'm just going to try to explain the puzzles as best as I can um, uh, here's your uh, I'm gonna save um, Yeah, so where was I with this? Um, oh yeah, here's another one of those. Um, you don't die from that. You just uh, sort of lose conscience for a little bit. Alright, let's search the lockers. Uh, you reach into the locker and found... Um, uh, duct tape. Electrical tape. You reach into the thing and found a fuse. And took it and put it in your pocket. You reached into the locker and found nothing, so you closed the door. And sometimes it's kind of, you know, uh, space ghost. And the laser sword, oh, 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 lightsaber, I guess. Uh, yes, there's also action in this game, which is kind of weird and controlled off the keyboard. More on that later. So here's a broken fuse, um, and I'm trying to replace, and won't let me, uh, because it's shortening out. So I need to repair that short, rather obvious big short right there uh, that zapped me earlier. So the, sol the solution for that is actually you put the, uh, uh, a rubber mat, which was convenient to land in the corner, underneath it. So uh, And that's how, that's I guess we're taping uh, the short, which of course fixed it. Um, uh, yeah, and now we can replace the fuse. Um, Here we go, so now we can put up the computer. And 
using the screen of course will not work uh, looking at it well all right we're gonna do a detailed test and we know what's wrong now um, there are some attempts at jokes uh, on there really um, really bad ones I mean, I understand this game was made with a lot of dedication, but and uh, they wanted to pay tribute. But honestly, like the writing, the writing is <laughs> the writing is really bad, like really bad. Um, here we go again. Yes, we know we're gonna kill you. All right, quicksand. Yeah, control button on keyboard actually uh, pulls out a sword and. Alt is used up. Oh, there we go. And uh, you hit control again and it swipes the uh, lightsaber. And Alt uh, sort of parries the attack. And then left and right uh, arrow keys will actually move you. And down will um, uh, sort of. I'm gonna holster the, um, the, the, the lightsaber. I'm gonna call it the lightsaber. Uh, it's, called, it's called laser sword, literally, but I'm just. I want to call it the lightsaber. Um, uh, so yeah, there's uh, a few of those action moments, and um, you know, some of them are kind of infuriating. Um, and of course, just like in the in the Seeger adventure game, everything is out to kill you. Ah, there we go, smashed. Um, the, <laughs> the the music on the uh, restore, restart, and quit screen is kind of, I don't know what, what, it, what it is about it. I don't uh, really like it. I uh, don't think it fits. Uh. Alright, and of course, another thing that's getting, getting inherited from uh, CR Adventure games is um, pixel hunting. You know, like, sometimes you will, you will have to take objects that are just, uh, just uh, tiny on the screen. I have just realized that I'm gonna have to narrate this for for like an hour. Uh, yeah, here we go. Here's um, some um, NPCs here. Uh, this guy, he, he counts things. So we're gonna talk to him. Some uh, uh, some uh, really really bad dialogue. And um, basically, all the character interaction here in this game is basically well, as little as there is, uh, it's all fetch quests. Like the guy literally just tells you, uh, "Oh, I have a lab, and um, I have a, a blue thing in there." Uh, so, and literally, he's just like, "Bring it to me." Um. So that's that, we just got our first uh, fetch quest. Um, not very many locations in the game. I actually kind of like the art for a small zoo. Basically the game is mostly made for like a uh, few people, uh, you know. Uh, most of them of course are artists, did the art and animation, so... Um, oh yeah, the dude's like... Looks like he's laughing at you, but it looks like he's having a seizure. Plus this just reminds me of something, that's just something straight out of Dizzy. Oh yeah, at the bottom right, if you notice, you actually have a health bar, uh, which uh, restores with the time, but yeah, it's a health bar. And yeah, ah, here we go, got massacred because I tried to attack him with a, with a lightsaber, so you don't do that. Isn't, isn't like the guy with a, just like a troll with a thing, uh, where is it from? Dizzy, one of the Dizzy games. And the Prince of the Yorkfolk or something. Uh, Garden the bridge. Uh, I'm gonna save uh, quite often here, uh, maybe to show off, uh, a few deaths or something. Um, actually, uh, when, when you save, when you go into the menu and like it waits for keyboard input, like the music pauses. Annoying. Oh yeah, and uh, here I'm trying out the I'm I'm trying out the keyboard control, which uh, unlike in CR games is actually very precise. Uh, you press uh, an arrow, and he walks in that direction. If you press uh, the arrow just a little bit, um, he, like he walks just like a few pixels, and uh, 
you let go of the key and he stops walking. So it's actually a really cool control comparing to the Sierra one. And um, on the numpad, the diagonals also work. Uh, control like this would actually be really handy in something like, uh, you know, Space Quest 2 maze. Uh, and here we go, this on the bottom there, it's actually one of the zombified uh, enemies. Um, but uh, I'm just gonna walk across. And I actually got really lucky here. Because uh, uh, that that walk across the pond is, uh, is pixel perfect. Uh, oh yeah. And, and there's this, so... Um, you can go left, uh, right, or up, you know, east, west, north. And when you go, oh yeah, this happens. Somehow you just teleport into lefty's bar, you can uh, talk to the guy. Um, of course, the joke is you speak to him in Russian, he plans in surprisingly bad English. And uh, just, um, just um, attempts at humor, failing. Just failing more, you know, Larry and Ken, and, you know, funny stuff, just, uh, uh, moves, um, yeah, of course, um, would be awesome if I could actually knock on the door and say Ken sent me, but that's not quite the way it works, yep, and you just come out. So, sort of an end joke. And uh, I guess uh, an illegal um, joke. Uh, actually, um, oh yeah, there we go. Here goes the double fight. Let's save and get some lightsaber action going. But uh, yeah, I guess the game came out in uh, early '98. I remember seeing ads for it. Um, horrendous box art. Um, and uh, yeah, Russia really didn't have uh, any copyright laws. So mid '90s, um, uh, you know, you know the whole uh, Tetris ordeal. If you don't, then look it up. It's uh, kind of an interesting story. Plus, let's face it, Tetris is um, one of those uh, very few perfect games. Um, of course, uh, I take pride in that being Russian, even though I had nothing to do with that game. I just happen to like it, just like everybody else in the world. All right, here we go. We get the. That's a lab. I do like the art here. Uh, let's take this and then... Uh, actually, very few... Uh, that's another thing that's n not like in Sierra Adventure games. Like, you, this is just a generic look message for for this room. Like, none of... There is no extra descriptions for, uh, for additional objects. I am actually supposed to take the flashlight here, which is that blue thing on the table to the left, yeah, right there. Now, oh, look, it's a flashlight. Well, let's take it. So, uh, here we go. Um, yeah, some bad design decisions here. Um, uh, like, uh, remember my first, very first action, I just looked at the monster and it didn't even give me a description, literally. I, I tried to look at the monster and walked up to him and it just, uh, you know, t the monster ate me. Um, they never warn you or anything um, uh, about things. I mean, very much Sierra style, but uh, so up here we go. Uh, yeah, like I was like, what ha what happened? I didn't really. I forgot because um, because I went through uh, went across the pond so perfectly the first time by just clicking across. Um, uh, I forgot that the the pond was deadly. So <laughs> I mean, I really should have known better. Um, but, um, yeah, so here we go. And, yeah, as, uh, as you have guessed, um, the game has no, um, uh, the game has no, uh, voiceovers or anything, but it does use Sound Blaster, obviously, for streaming, uh, music and, uh, playing, uh, sound effects. Um... Actually, it has quite a few sound effects stolen, or maybe they're not stolen, they're just like so generic um, that you've heard them in like different games and stuff, but uh, I don't know. Sound libraries I would, in Russia, mid-90s, eh, I just I just think they're stolen from other games. Like, see if you can recognize any sounds and then just uh, 
you know, post it in the comments. Uh, yeah, there is some story going. So basically, um, uh, you're a space cadet <laughs> and uh, trained to be a pilot. Uh, you uh, all you want, all you know to do, all you know how to do is to sleep. So you train yourself to go into a deep sleep. Uh, you can't pass the exam, but they gave you time off. You land on this planet because you were sleeping, and the planet's been taken over by um, uh, one of your people. Uh, you went rogue and. Uh, uh, zombified uh, all the people here so in the end you end up freeing them but you don't know that they're human just yet um, yeah I mean the art is nice like over here I you know very space questy like a uh, sort of space quest one VGA remake uh, I guess the the outsourced one not really sea art which which is why it has a sort of like uh oh, there we go again. Uh it has that sort of uh, slightly different art style. Like slightly more painted than anything else. Yeah now I'm like thinking it's an RPG so I'm trying to search the corpse for some coins but uh, no such luck. And yeah, I'm playing this game all the way through, so uh, uh, if you're still interested, uh, I, don't, I really don't know. I don't really watch that that many let's plays, um, uh, and um, uh, here's probably uh, oh yeah, uh, we gotta open that secret panel there and get uh, the dude told us. Uh, what the password is, or the clue, but he basically told us what the password is, so let's... Yeah, there's a... Lock, and then enter key! Yeah, awesome. I normally, uh, uh, you know, don't do let's plays, or just play in this. I did it because, well, uh, with um, um, two guys from Andromeda... Uh, oh yeah, this is <laughs> actually pretty awesome, because... In the secret compartment, we get five and a quarter floppy disk. Yep, five and a quarter inch floppy. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, because uh, it is it is more interesting space quest um, due to um, guys from Andromeda reuniting and working on a new space venture. If you don't know anything about it, please uh, go to guysfromandromeda.com, and um, there you can get a link to their Kickstarter campaign. And you can pledge a few bucks to support uh, their new adventure game. Adventure game by the creators of Kings, uh, Space Quest. So, you like Space Quest? I mean, of course you do. So, you want more? Pledge some money. That's that. So, that's why I decided to play this game. Uh, plus, you know what? It's nice to show off some of the Russian stuff. Uh, I might do this a bit more. And I don't really want to do the reviews of them unless they're like really, really good. Um, uh, Russian games for MS DOS really, the industry was underdeveloped at that point, and uh, none of them really played that important part in my life, so I don't really feel like reviewing them, but it's cool to, uh, I guess, to show up what my motherland uh, had produced. Uh, and at this mere moment in time, I know I promised for like a, I, I, I promised a uh, hundred times to, um, bring this nost DOS nostalgia back with more reviews and stuff and I am working on it, it just out of nowhere this project uh, sort of popped up that uh, I'm working on right now and uh, so that's taken some time plus I have a few um, things of my own like I'm involved in a lawsuit I'm trying to file my citizenship papers and a bunch of other stuff plus uh, let's not forget probably the biggest one I'm like the biggest procrastinator on planet earth so uh, just because I have an excuse like uh, I'm doing everything else um, I, I, I'm not working on dust nostalgia it's kind of you know that's my uh, excuse for not working on it <coughs> sorry it's actually really really early in the morning it's my day off um, but uh, yeah it's footage is there I have great games lined up I just want to push through with all those things to get them out of the way like in my mind they're they're more important than videos on YouTube uh, 
even though I always like uh, the feedback, guys, I like the comments and everything. Um, uh, like, I have to get with important stuff first. Um, Alright, so, there's that for Dust Nostalgia. So that's my Dust Nostalgia update. Alright, so, um, uh, let's see here, I'm, uh, yeah. I read the emails to get some more exposition on the user story. Um, the joke there was that, you know, that you actually get some uh, email server names. Alright. Some things in this game are so, like, uh, like very space quest -y. Like, um, actually, now that we're uh, speaking of uh, space quest, uh, I'm gonna give you my personal top favorite of all space quest games, from most like to least like. So that would be um, uh, five, three, one. Uh, four, two, and six. And I like two. I, I really do like two. Uh, I, I, I actually have it boxed on floppies still. And uh, uh, the re release. The, not the five and a quarter. The uh, three and a half uh, inch floppies. Two of them. The 3D Adventure by Sierra. Oh, yeah, this is just like that's. This is just me, or this is almost like straight off Quest for Glory, the, the first one, the VGA remake, the, the flowers uh, and stuff. I was almost like, alright, I didn't spit something out, let me catch it. Oh yeah, and the Hermit. Yeah, so yeah, something very uh, Quest quest for Glory-esque uh, here. Um, yes. Pardon me, my uh, ADD. Um, what was I talking about? Space Quest stuff. Yeah, whatever. I love Space Quest. But Space Quest games are great. I, I am actually very much surprised uh, that after uh, that uh, uh, Scott and Mark actually settled their differences uh, and uh, now are working on everything. I mean, we um, live in the glorious era for adventure games right now. I guess. I mean, we'll yet to see what the products are going to be, but, you know, uh, I'm, I've pledged to just about every point and click adventure project on Kickstarter and now I'm, I'm, I'm my financial situation is far from stellar so now I'm more poor so they better be good you hear people former LucasArts Sierra and others please please you know use my money wisely alright so yeah we got back to the game we got another fetch quest from the priest uh, he's literally just like find me the axe uh, yeah. All right, and bring it to me. Like, ugh. does that even count as a puzzle that you just have to find an item? Actually, the way you find the item is, uh, yeah, I'm trying to like, uh, and you can't really uh, pull up your uh, late lightsaber in just about anywhere. You can't. Uh, like, that's the message that you're gonna get. Like, who who are you trying to fight? Um. Uh, alright, um... So, yeah, finally. Here we go. Um... Yeah, the, uh, walking icon sometimes gets in your way, because, uh, uh... Sometimes it's just easy to actually walk with a keyboard. Alright, yeah, here I am, trying to catch butterflies. Basically, I spent, like, 20 minutes uh, trying to catch that butterfly, and nothing worked, uh, because it's a part of a puzzle, which, I, uh, obviously, you can... Uh, I looked up in the walkthrough, because I, I really couldn't figure it out. Uh, but basically, yeah, the moment that I skipped there is, like, 20 minutes of me just bopping around and trying to do something. But that's how you find an axe in this game. Pay close attention. You try to catch the butterfly, you fall down, and you find an axe. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, the, uh, the axe butterfly, I really don't know what were they thinking, um, I just, uh, I saw developers on one of the message board, uh, boards, uh, like, five years ago, and I was really, really, really tempted to be like, what the hell is with the, 
with a butterfly and axe. Actually, that's the thing. Like, there's so much effort put in this game with, between the art and everything else and the programming. Um, well, programming. I mean, this game is written in Turbo Pascal. Uh, Borland Turbo Pascal. Um, how do I know? Uh, because it also features one of those famous Borland Turbo Pascal errors. Runtime error 200, uh, where the timer wouldn't work and it uh, would divide by zero on anything that's faster than uh, than uh, than a 486. Uh, this game came out in 98, so for many people it it was unplayable <laughs> when it came out. You had to get a patch that, that fixed that generic error. But yeah, so there's a lot of effort put in this. Written in Turbo Pascal, I'm sure it wasn't it wasn't easy. You know, that's a blast from the past. You know, who, who even remembers Pascal or Delphi or, or, or anything? Um, and a lot of art, but it looks like the, the, the puzzles and the writing and everything else just just got the shaft. Like, uh, like the, the dialogue is. I'm sorry, it, uh, it's horrendous. Uh, puzzle design. Come on, falling, trying to catch a butterfly, and that's how you get an axe. Um, and I'm even not sure if it's like the worst puzzle in my opinion in this game. Um, uh, as a tribute, I guess it, it's cool. I mean, obviously people like Space Quest a lot. Um, but, oh yeah, like, locked door, locked uh, trying to look at that gigantic keyhole on there. Awesome. And swipe the card. Alright, yeah. I don't know why I'm hesitating here. Um, Yes, this is an officer's uh, place. Um, I'm going to find a few items here. Um, also, weird design. So uh, let's get the web. Nothing there. Uh, some creepy crawly thingy. Get the blue bottle. Nothing is really in quite in, 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 in the right perspective. Oh yeah, that's a photo camera. Now that's, that photo camera looks like it's something from like 400 years ago. Um, I don't know what it's doing on the planet, but yeah, it's a photo camera and you actually get to use it and you get an instant uh, print. So I guess it's a Polaroid, but it looked like, uh, you know, I don't know, one of those really, really... Uh, oldest, uh, you know, photo cameras, fancy. It would give you like a sepia tone photograph. All right, almost a half hour in, and I'm uh, running out of uh, stuff to talk about. I don't know why I'm I'm just bopping around. Come on, come on, and tell you. Oh yeah, so yeah, the the dude was. Uh, yeah, here we go. I use, just use the keyboard to go. It's just much easier. Alright, so um, we gotta get uh, some more items here. I, I, oh, I just looked at the waveform. I'm sorry, I apologize for the for the peaking levels. That microphone is sort of dangling off my shoulder here, and I'm just trying to talk into it while looking at five different directions. So, Sorry if I uh, blew your eardrums out. Okay, yeah, fill in the bottle. Yeah, fountain. It's coming from underground. Awesome. That's literally the line that just appeared on the screen. I've actually never. Uh, it's weird. Um, this is going to be almost an hour long. I just thought I like I've never re-encoded and upscaled. Uh, uh, I mean, there's not much things edited here, so I guess it probably won't take as long to render out the file. But I'm actually going to have to. Uh, I like to uh, sort of upscale the footage, obviously, uh, before I upload it to YouTube. So if you play in any of the high def modes, you can actually see the the actual graphics because it lower resolutions it just compress it to death and you know the slow res uh, graphics uh, as they were in old games you know they only get worse with the YouTube compression so it's always better you're always better off just watching it in HD 
Right, so here is uh, Professor Exposition. Um, tells us some more important plot points of the rogue uh, guy who just takes over the planet, uh, you know, and then wants to take over the world. The world, of course. All right, blah 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 blah. Uh, uh, battle cyborg guarding something something so um, here we go basically he just told us where to go. again not very clever writing there's like no clues to anything except for either there's either no clues for like puzzles like butterfly and, and, and the axe or you know people you're just being told exactly what to do uh, so yeah Walking, 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 walking. Every time I think of like walking between identical green screens, uh, I always sort of the first uh, Legend of Kirandia. Um, a lot of that, a lot of that going on. Oh, like that tree is positioned so uh, I can't really communicate. That tree always gets in the way of walking. Uh, uh, so, yep. Uh huh. Here we go. Here's another one of those. Um, uh, through the door, there's a guard that shoots you. He, like as soon as he sees you, he shoots you. No, I didn't. I didn't show it there because I knew about it. And uh, yeah, you <sighs> you get some green goo out of a barrel. Which, by the way, you have to find a specific spot to use. You put it on your face to uh, uh, camouflage yourself as one of the zombified people. Like, really? Really? And, and if, even if you look like one of the zombified people, you know, you have no pass, so it just shoots you, naturally. Well, oh well. So, let's restore here. And, um... It just makes no sense to me, this kind of thing, like, like really, like, you would just get some, obviously, uh, probably dangerous, radioactive, just goo, just, just looks like mutagen or the, the stuff from uh, Toxic Avenger, and just, like, rub it on your face, like, really, like, that's the only thing, and yeah, he tells you that, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you tell him some jokes, like literally, like some lame jokes are being told. Uh, he won't let you buy without a pass, but all you really do is give him the video game. Hey, look at that. Looks like an etch sketch I'll be honest. And yeah, now he's not gonna shoot you, so you can actually get in the whatever it's supposed to be. Um, I I really uh, yeah, and also y you do die. Like basically, uh, <laughs> you put the green stuff on your face, and then you need to um, jam the door here um, so it won't close, and uh, press that button. So you press the button, the door opens. Uh, usually, you know, if you don't jump the door, then, uh, he just walks through. Now you have to wash it off, otherwise, if you walk, in, you know, if you walk into the next screen and you're still green, you die. Pretty space questy, um, in a way. Yeah, here I'm trying to find an exit, but I'm like, uh, I, I I forget that the exit is actually inside. Like that door I just opened. That shows you how forgetful I am. I was just like, I just opened the door, but I was just like, oh, I gotta wash off my face, and I forgot what happens next. Happens to me all the time. Unfortunately, I have to write down a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, here we go. All right, more action. Uh, just faces in those guards. Are those noses, mouths? Are they all mustached people? Like. Something with those sprites. I don't know. 
but at least they're not stolen directly. Like, uh, I'm sorry, um, I really, really, oh yeah, here we go. Another one of those uh, annoying things where, like, you click too close to the exit, he gets too close to the exit, yeah, he'll just automatically goes inside. Um, yeah, but what is it going on? Oh yeah, the stolen sprites. Um, Touche, the adventure of the fifth musketeer. Um, all human sprites are there. They have walk cycles and talk cycles and everything else from... from from Guybrush Street Food, from, uh, you know, Circa Monkey Island 2. Like, the hand and everything, the boots, it's so weird. Um, but I guess this game, a bit more copyright. I mean, not only does it use, I don't know if they got the permission to use the music, uh, but, um, uh, you know, Leisure Suit Larry, sprites, and the musical theme and this game also for the cutscenes it uses uh, you know smacker uh, uh, and uses like a smack it just calls a, a, a smack player executable and just uh, gets the cutscene plays the cutscenes you can actually see the output in the background uh, if you look really close not in this video because I cut it out for some reason but uh, uh, you can see stuff I kind of like this joke you look into the mouth and find a bone uh, uh, a newspaper and uh, a can of food and uh, a poster and nothing else <laughs> I, I like that like useless stuff that you find in there like, he doesn't pocket it he just throws it out and you go in there with a with a flashlight and yeah this is pretty neat I'm sorry like uh, I, I like this part like uh pretty cool I don't I don't understand I don't, because the perspective I don't understand why you couldn't get the stuff from the other end but uh, visually interesting and it's uh, it's a funny joke so sometimes this game is not so bad but yeah what was it going is oh yes yeah, so it uses a uh, smacker for for cutscenes in just in the beginning and the end and uh, I'm sure they didn't license that either something just tells me I mean I might be wrong CompuLink <laughs> if anybody's watching, uh, let me know. But uh, uh, yeah. what's what's that? Is that a bloody robot in the bottom left there? I don't understand. Um, yeah. So as I said, not many active um, objects on screen. It's just not a lot of animation altogether. Um, like here, we just gotta get some dynamite from one of the crates. The only one that's not locked, and basically that screen uh, um, has nothing else useful on it. Yeah, now I'm just like, huh? What am I doing? Oh yeah, I remembered. There's an exit at the top left that I'm supposed to go to. But I'm not sure how to get there. Yeah, just unreachable. You can't... You can't get through. You try to... If it's unreachable, you try to act with it. You, you know, you try to use it or something. And um, it won't work. just won't do anything. So... At this point, I'm like, huh? And then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to go around. So... Eventually, I do realize that I should have cut it out. But yeah, believe me, I I cut out two very painful moments. It basically increased uh, uh, altogether. I think they increased. Uh, uh, I think th this playthrough is uh, total totals for just under an hour. Uh, my footage came out to like over an hour and a half uh, because of those two things. One of them was looking for <laughs> was looking for the axe, where I was like, what the hell. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, uh, I consulted the walkthrough. Oh, yeah, here I am on the other end. And here's what happens. Oh, it's a devilish screen. Um, basically, uh, the puzzle here is, uh, the, uh, control panel over there, uh, switches the fork in the, uh, in the rails over there. Like, like so. Uh, here comes out the guard from the front. I mean, the perspective makes him look much smaller. He's like, hey, don't do that. Or something. Uh, so, I, 
Yeah, so you call him and then you switch, uh, uh, and you, you know, you, oh my goodness. So, you call him, you press the control panel, and it hits him. But the timing has to be so precise, like, really, I literally cut out, like, good 15 minutes of me trying to do this. Uh, like, uh, no, I'm missing it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to illustrate how ridiculous it is. Oh yeah, here we go, I lowered the speed and look how I'm calling him. No. No, he can't see anything. BAM! Like that's... Like, you literally have to click on it and you have to call him and like by the time it all comes together, a second later and you're done. And you can see some leftover graphic artifacts in there from the redrawing. Like I got a few pointers hanging in the air. It's because uh, the animation was playing through it. Um, actually, kind of interesting how how it saves the background. Uh, like I wouldn't I wouldn't do it this way. All right. Uh, let's see. We're getting closer to to winning the game. You try to like use them, and and it's like the, the message that gets you. It's like, are you crazy? Uh. I, like, are you really trying to do it? And I was like, what What does it imply that, that I'm doing? I'm just clicking the use icon. Yeah, you have to take his watch. He has a gold watch or some sort. Um, and you take a picture of his face with your old camera that gives you an instant uh, print. Uh, so an ancient Polaroid, so to speak. Or maybe it's a Polaroid of the future. I mean, why would it be gigantic? I don't know, but... Just retro style. Yeah. Uh, that puzzle. I'm gloriously walking back and I'm getting run over. Of course. So, <laughs> now, I gotta do this again. Alright, all right, let's get to watch. Let's take the picture. Alright. Of course, this time I'll try not to forget and save. Save, 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 save. Oh. <laughs> Missed it by that much. Alright, there we go. So, um, yeah, that uh, photo, uh, photo that we took, uh, <laughs> uh, we needed the key card, which for some reason is just automatically, I think, um, and the photo. Um, yeah, we use photo on camera right here, but just put it on the face. Oh, approved. Of course, it's approved, and after that, we can just take it off, and security doesn't care anymore once approved. Is there everything is just fine. Oh yeah, here comes another one of those um, annoying action places. Um, use the rope on the hook. Uh, hook is visible, so it doesn't bother me. So we need to pick up a rock. There's a guard up there. Um, if you come upstairs and you don't distract the guard, you get annihilated. So what you do is you pick up this rock, you throw it uh, at the guard. And of course it's one of those things that uh, if screw up you know see like yeah too slow yeah you only have one shot at this too so uh, the game becomes unwinnable and now you do this so while he's shooting you pull out his sword you pull out his sword and only not like that what you what you have to do is uh, well, what I first have to do, what I realized, I have to lower the speed. Yeah. So you throw the rock, you instantly run, and then you walk normally at the, your normal speed to him while he's shooting down, and you pull out your sword, and then you have like a split second to, to hit him with your sword. So here we go. Ah! But almost, almost. So uh, I'm pretty sure I can do it on the on the, on the third try. But yeah, if 
if you just waste that moment when you throw the rock, uh, this is it. You have no more rocks, and um, the game becomes unwinnable. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure that yeah. Now I don't. Now I'm not so sure of so all of a sudden anymore. But yeah, I think the rock has disappeared from the inventory, and there's nothing to distract the guard with anymore. Dun, 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 blow out the lightsaber! Ah! Die. Uh, well... I mean, when we struck him down, he didn't become more powerful than we could possibly imagine. Wrong universe. That's such a lame joke, I don't know why I even tried it. Oh yeah, and then you have... The guy hits you if you jump into space, so... Uh, bike. Uh, so you throw, you, I mean, you just throw dynamite at him. He couldn't shoot you, he had to wait for you to throw that dynamite. Alright, and some 3D stuff here, pre-rendered. The end is near. So you talk to the guys who are repairing your stuff, you tell them what the diagnostics told you. So they're like, whoa! Yeah, we're, it's a Russian game, so... Oh yeah, and you, and you uh... You need uh, the microchip. Well, the microchip, I don't know. And they took all your stuff out of the ship, so you pick up the rubber mat again. You talk to the professor. dum de dum de dum de dum dum de dum de dum de dum he basically tells you that you're the only one, like, he cannot spare any soldiers, so you are the one who has to go to the evil dude's base and foil his plan. Like, that's literally what he said, like, oh, I can't spare any people, so you're the one who can do it, like, couldn't finish school, just a kid, and, like, he sends you on a, on a dangerous mission to sort of, uh, to blow up this, uh, this mind controlling device that this evil dude made who is now like, powerful and can zombify you basically it's like w what um yeah some more stolen sound effects i mean allegedly all right so here we go now Oh, wait. That the <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> Quantum Leap theme. Remember that? I don't know why that would be as a elevator music. Maybe the, the man and the woman elevator music. Alright, I'll stop now. Sorry, it's still early here. Didn't have breakfast, didn't have anything. Oh yeah, so here you go. You get your... Uh, you get your... Uh, uh, the, the chip that you needed for your... Um, for your thing. And now... You have to leave the panels open in order for... Because in the next room you have the... You have the one and only encounter with the, with the villain. There's a big exposition, dialogue, take over the world, mwahaha, he tries to zombify you, but he can't because you just broke the thing in another room. And uh, I'm playing on a, uh, lower speed settings here because from now on the game actually becomes time sensitive. Uh, you can lose uh, quickly the antenna. Okay, this actually, I mean, it's like, and, and what? Like you press the button, like nothing happened, but in reality it unlocked the top floor where so you can get to the antenna, but um, you actually have limited time. Uh, this is literally almost the, the last minutes of the game. Here, and um, yeah, so you, all you need to do is just to blow it up, but you know time limit. Uh, I cut out the big chunk here before because I was actually late the first time, so like I couldn't do the very last action. I would just keep dying, and after like 50 times restoring, I was just like, alright, let me restore from the previous save and um, do this again. 
So yeah, you tie the dynamite to it. Then what you do, genius, attach a wristwatch to it. That makes it a time bomb. And now we have 15 seconds to get the hell out of here. Use your scooter. There's um, do up. Uh, yep, the villain is dead. The uh, zombie find device is foiled. And ta -ta -ta oh yeah, you saw that, right? Just smack play. The unlicensed uh, smacker. Dum de dum de dum de stupid voices that I oh, be grateful I cut out. Uh, pretty much most, most of the intro, the, the voiceovers are horrendous, the yeah, animation is, is, is horrible. And just, just, this is like the older dude just has his voice pitched down right here, and probably the same guy. So maybe not, but I can't tell. Fireworks! Yes! Pre rendered fireworks. Excellent. So we saved the planet. This um, amazing Space Quest ripoff. Um, they fixed your ship and uh, you beam yourself up into it and uh, you fly off to, I guess, live happily ever after, although you're not very. Um, that's right, that's, that's how it works. That's off the head. It's funny. Head. So that's that. And another, this time. 640 by 480, just like the opening cutscene. Uh, for the credits. Oh man, I'm tired. And I need breakfast. But yeah, here we go. Ivan Loshkin and the Price of Freedom was uh, developed by basically uh, like three guys um, plus um, additional people who did um, art and animation. I mean, there's a lot of dedication there. I'm not gonna bash it, and obviously. Not a lot of experience. Uh, people just liked uh, Space Quest and decided to, to make make their own. I mean, they could have moved on a bit, and they didn't have. Uh, maybe could have hired a writer, maybe better story, or maybe f before they launched into the whole production, maybe they could have thought out story and puzzles a bit more. Just do a second pass. Like it, a lot of it just seems really, really lazy. But oh yeah, and the three. Uh, Eat Static, I guess, is uh, the responsible for ambience uh, music. A theme from musical theme from uh, Larry and uh, graphical. Uh, it says blah blah blah. Says thanks to Roger Wilco from Space Quest, which is like we just ripped it off. I mean, it's obvious. Everybody knows it. Uh, some credits are missing too. There's like blank spots there. You know, it's like internet provider. Nobody. And also. Came to drink beer with us. Two credits. Said that this was awesome. One guy. Make me a superstar. I don't know. Special thanks to uncles. Uh, <laughs> special thanks to this guy for providing space for fun activities. And also special thanks for everybody who didn't interfere with the creation of the game. Pretty funny. Well, the end. And uh, yeah, my first playthrough, so comment, actually tell me if you watched all the way through, I mean I congratulate you for doing the whole hour. That's it. So back the um, two guys from Andromeda uh, Kickstarter, and um, hopefully I'll see you very soon with a new Dust Nostalgia review. Yeah, thanks for watching, see you next time.